My father, Professor Alan Dan, was an instrumentation engineer. As a professor, he used to teach engineering subjects. He was also an entrepreneur. He set up a manufacturing business in India named after his daughter, Ravathi Electronics and Controls. My inspiration comes from his passion and dedication towards engineering. I followed his footsteps in engineering, and I studied engineering at Bridgenorth College of Further Education, where I met my partner, Philip Timms, who was also an engineer. I was the only woman in the whole of the engineering class. In fact, I was the only Asian woman in the whole of Bridgenorth College, so I remember it being very challenging times as a woman trying to fit in with a group of men in engineering. Phil and I used to often compete with each other, but we also had compl complementary skills. I would conduct a lot of the re research and put forward ideas and solutions, and he would design and engineer it. And I remember this famous quote that my father used to say, scientists discover the world that exists, and engineers create the world that never was. I'm not sure if you all know, 2018 is the year of engineering, and hence why I wanted to deliver this speech today. Engineering UK estimates around 186,000 engineers are required until 2024 for engineers to work on a wealth of projects. So this is an opportunity for us to inspire a whole generation of young people and for parents to help make those career choices to help tackle society's greatest challenge. I'm not sure if, would you agree that many young people's interests would lead them to engineering if they knew what engineering was and what they were doing? Young people are brilliantly creative and adaptable, and these attributes are high in demand in engineering, and this demand will increase if they only knew what modern cutting-edge engineering looked like and what a great career engineering can be. I have to say I've had a fairly extraordinary, successful career. A number of um, the employees would receive numbers, hundreds of CVs, and mine would stand out because I, I was a woman with engineering qualifications, and I would get a number of job offers. I've worked in industry for many years, and I've held many prestigious positions, sales, technical manager, project manager, business development manager, and I used to work with engineering manufacturing companies throughout the West Midlands region, supporting engineering manufacturing companies with their training and development needs and recruiting apprentices. I always did hit my targets and walked away with their business, and my team would ask, so how did you do it then, Ravathi? What is your secret of success? And I used to say, well, actually, it's simple. I used to develop, I used to build those robust relationships with my clients. I would get into their world, I would understand their business needs, and I would be very patient. Simple. Um, one manufacturing company, I remember Tooling International Limited, and it's in my appraisal, he used to comment and he used to say, Ravathi, thank you so much for your hard work, the commitment, the passion that you show towards our organization. Um, do you know that manufacturing stops when you walk through that door? So he would chokingly say that, but it's a huge compliment. So young people need role models, inspirational models like us to go and tell them, actually, well, engineering is a, an enjoyable career. Isn't making a difference in people's lives important and rewarding? Isn't improving the quality of our lives important and rewarding? Well, that's what engineering is. So what have I done to make a difference in people's lives? Well, a few years back, I decided I was going to set up my own manufacturing business, Avatar 3D Printing. And I had a vision that I was going to offer young people the key employability skills, the technical skills and the soft skills, and get them job ready. And I was going to do this by introducing our 3D printer here, digital fabrication tool, the Ingenium, Avatar 3D Printer, the Ingenium it's called. And my vision was that young people would access to this, have access to this laboratory kit, and then they would take their design ideas and they would make customized products that they would go through the iteration process of making a prototype, they would solve problems, they would work with teams, and they would innovate. So these are the key skills that employees are looking for, problem-solving skills, innovation skills, teamworking, communication skills. We went through a very tough manufacturing journey. I came up with some bizarre design ideas, uh, took it to manufacturers, and um, most of them, they just, it, was, it was just impossible to make. Um, I, I wanted a 3D printer to look more like a sewing machine, I think. Uh, we tried different materials, tried it in mild steel, aluminium, acrylic, patchy. Mild steel was very bulky and heavy, aluminium was very expensive, acrylic was brittle, it would crack. And we finally launched the product in the patchy frame here, as you can see. And I wanted deliberately to be tra transparent and foldable and portable, designed specifically for educational purposes. Now, I'm going to share with you a video I've edited myself, um, my journey of manufacturing the very first prototype um, we, it was made in mild steel. And you'll see, this is the 
traditional manufacturing methods of making the one-off prototype, the base of the 3D printer. And as you can see, the design of the 3D printer there, the base. Machine code instructions are sent to the laser cutting machine, which is machining the base of the printer. Several processes, the shaping, the bending, the welding of the materials, the drawing the materials. And then of course the final process, assembling and testing of the machine. And as you can see, it was a rather bulky looking 3D printer made in mild steel is very heavy, uh, but it was a huge. It was a great learning curve for us. Um, it worked, so it was, it was fantastic. Um, I called it the genie. It was the. It was a, a very, our very first prototype. So you can see how far we've come from the very first prototype. Um, and Bilston Engineering sponsored us for this particular prototype. It would have costed us a thousand pounds otherwise. Um, and I obtained a number of grants actually to go through several iterations four iterations of prototype. And, and here's an example of additive manufacturing process. Now, this is a, an example of uh, a prototype, which is a Burj Khalifa building. It's one of the tallest buildings in the world in Dubai. And it's being 3D printed on our 3D printer here, a fused deposition modeling 3D printer. So what it's doing, it's fusing deposited layers of thermoplastic materials layer by layer to create a 3D object. And as you can see here, how many processes? There's only one process, additive manufacturing process, in comparison to all the process that we went through to make that one-off prototype. So we've, you know, we, we didn't cut, we didn't go laser cutting, bending, shaping, welding. We've created a whole one-off prototype using the one process, 3D printing. And hence why this uh, technology, the industry, are not just using for prototyping development, but it, um, for um, final part production, because we're able to save on production costs, we're, um, el we're eliminating waste, there's no reduced waste, that you can see there's no waste in this particular prototype. And uh, we've been able to turn it around quicker, so we've saved time. So I was the first person who take this 3D took this 3D printer, which was launched in 2015, to the local schools in the Midlands region, the, the, com the local community, um, local businesses, colleges, UTC, university students, and I inspired many young people and many people about this, um, the importance and the impact this technology is having in all of our lives. And, and they were amazed. Some of them hadn't even heard of 3D printing, and some of them had heard of the 3D printer, but they'd never seen one print. And they were amazed that you could actually control the manufacturing process and make customized products. Amazing. They were fascinated. And I inspired many young people, telling them, actually, you know, your perception that in engineering is dirty and greasy. Well, that's not the case anymore. We're using digital methods to make things now. So in a very short period of time, very tough manufacturing journey, but a, a fantastic, rewarding, inspirational journey for me. So the future will depend on 3D printing, printing technologies, everyone, in all aspects of our lives, from the houses that we live in, the cars that we drive, the streets that we use, uh, uh, health care, the clothes that we wear, and the food that we eat. And coming to the food that we eat, Avatar 3D won a number of awards, one for manufacturing a 3D printer locally here in the UK. Let me say that again, manufacturing a 3D printer in the UK and taking the product to market. Um, and we further innovated the 3D printer to not only th print in thermoplastic materials, but in chocolate. So it was a sweet engineer engineering innovation project. And it was a joint collaborative activity with the UTC, Aston University Engineering Academy. So my extraordinary love engineering story continues at UTC Love Lane, Aston University Engineering Academy with the engineering students supporting me manufacture a chocolate extruder. So I set them a challenge and I gave them a brief and I said to them, well, we've got to convert this 3D printer that's printing in thermoplastic materials to print in chocolate. They couldn't wait to get their hands on the 3D printer. They were fascinated, they were very enthusiastic, and they worked with me as they would in a normal manufacturing business. And they, we went through this whole design engineering process. Um, they worked in teams, and they researched different methods of extruding chocolate, and they put forward their ideas and solutions, and those ideas and solutions were developed. We made a prototype, 
Again, we went through this several iteration process. Some of the parts were machined using traditional methods and some were 3D printed. So I know these kids will remember me in the future when they write their job applications. They'll be able to say they, they worked with Avatar 3D, a local manufacturing business, and they gained some valuable employability skills because they were able to understand the difference between traditional methods of ma making, additive manufacturing methods. So they really did get some real-life experience working on a real-life project. So here's an example of the foldable 3D printer here that you can swap a nozzle that prints in thermoplastic materials to a syringe. And we pour tempered chocolate in the syringe and the extruder will 3D print layers of chocolate, layer by layer, and here's an example of the Business Quarter logo that was printed in chocolate. Business Quarter magazine recognised this project as a leadership project and was published in our shortlisted for the Midlands region as a talented emerging entrepreneur and for innovation. And as you can see, the various parts have been printed in various materials, uh, 3D printed in ninja plant, copper fill, bronze fill, iron fill, wood fill, and of course in chocolate. And the, the full story is um, all um, on the website and published in the UTC Technical Matters. So if you visit avatar3dprinting.uk, you'll see case studies on the Sweet Engineering Innovation Project. We demonstrated at various events, Haim Higher, Higher Education events, Malvern Innovation Festival, and look at them. They were just absolutely fascinated. They, this is fantastic, the events at Malvern. Um, and here's some more photos of, and this young lady here, she said, if you bring that pretty in pink 3D printed to um, our school, I'm sure we will all take up engineering. So that was a huge uh, compliment and, and a great feedback. So from um, a, f a very tough journey I, I, in a very short period of time, I've thoroughly enjoyed it because I've made such a difference in so many people's lives who've been involved in my project from, from the beginning, from prototype development through to final uh, display showcasing uh, chocolate. They enjoy 3D printing and of course everyone loves chocolate. So what a sweet engineering project it was indeed. What's interesting was when I studied at University of Wolverhampton years ago, I picked up subjects like physics, maths, digital, digital electronics, computer-aided design, and I had no idea how I was going to apply those subjects in industry. And I ended up working for Epson Manufacturing Company, putting together their Epson printers, a, a 2D assembly, as a production operator for months. Little did I know I was going to be manufacturing my own 3D printers years later. I picked up subjects like masters in lean manufacturing and project management and what did I do, industrial enterprise, and a little did I know I was going to be applying those lean principles to my own manufacturing business. So we don't know what the future jobs are going to be, but it's that knowledge and the experience, the skills that you gain over the years, working on different projects, working with different people. So that's what makes you a valuable, useful person, and that's what's, uh, uh, those skills have been absolutely valuable for my own business. If design and technology were a mandatory unit and not an optional unit, and if young people were able to apply this technology to the, the various subject areas, then we would certainly be creating a pool of talented designers, engineers, creators, innovators, entrepreneurs, and we'll be closer to meeting the, sh skills, the shortage skills gap. So, really, the future is yours to make. So, if the key message to young people is, the future is yours to make. If you've got what it takes, take up engineering, make a difference in people's lives, and make your future a bright one. I love what you talk about. And I'll bring some samples to this time later. I just want to say thank you to my partner, Philip Timms, who's been instrumental in him. Every step of the journey, he's been there for me, and he's an exceptional engineer who's, who's engineered this 3D printer, and we've got several versions of it. It's all very colourful. And thank you, Adrian, for letting me share the story on this TEDx platform, and thank you, everyone, for your time listening.